Welcome to the Josh Durbin Show, because law school didn't teach business. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Josh Durbin Show. This is our third quarantine edition, uh, 26th overall. Uh, today's episode is going to touch on something that I think a lot of lawyers have been dealing with during the coronavirus pandemic, and that is clients that have asked to delay payments of bills or even for a significant reduction in fees. And you know, how do we handle these questions? So the first thing I want to do is I want to dispel the myth that it is good client service to agree to let people not pay you on time or to agree to just slash your fees when something happens and the economy turns south. That Just because that happens doesn't mean that we have to accept less from our clients when it comes to money. And look, this is a very delicate situation, right? Because we have not only an economic crisis, we have a health crisis. Um, you have clients that might be completely shuttered. Their businesses may not even be able to be opened. And every situation is going to call for um, a unique response from you. You know, you I mean, you have to think about long-term relationships now, but you also have to think about your business and your law firm and your bottom line. So again, I don't think that you have to look at accepting delay in payment or reduction in fees as good client service in a hard time. You can certainly push back on those things and do it in the right way. Because ultimately, as lawyers, we're running a business too. And we have commitments ourselves, whether it be rent, salaries of our employees, all the expenses that come with running a law firm. And it shouldn't just be on us to accept from a client that, oh, well, legal services, that's something we don't necessarily have to pay for right away because we don't have a tangible product. You know, I mean, in, in other words, a lot of companies, a lot of your clients may be paying their suppliers or other vendors on time and full price because those are the things they need to keep their business actually moving. Whereas legal services tend to be more long-term, right? We're trying to prevent problems for clients. So we're trying to secure protection for clients. In our case, we're trying to secure trademark registrations. These are not things you need day to day to operate your business in the trenches. These are things that are important to do. Um, but again, you know, I think this is where some of your clients may feel they can delay payment or ask for reduction in fees because ultimately they don't view your services as critical uh, to the operation of their enterprise. That being said, I think it's very important for lawyers not to just accept the fact that their clients may view them as non-critical, but to work with their clients in a way that can make sense for the short term and to preserve long-term relationships. So hopefully I have you at a point now where you don't feel bad having to have difficult discussions with your clients. Obviously, look, it depends on your particular situation and the particular client. That's always going to rule above any of the tips I'm going to give you here in today's episode. Um, our firm is fortunate in the sense that there's really not one client that makes up a significant portion of our revenue. So if somebody were to come to us and say that they can't afford the fees right now or they need to be 60 or 90 days out on paying invoices, we're able to push back on that because ultimately... For us, we have other clients that are available and can pay us and we, you know, we can continue to do work for them. Um, so there's a little bit of flexibility we have in our bottom line because we don't have to accept uh, that situation. Now, if you have one or two clients, you may feel like you have less of a negotiating position because you know if one of them ultimately walks or you damage a long-term relationship, that can be really problematic for your firm. But I think that also, by the way, should be a point to think about, which is that you really shouldn't be that dependent on just a client or two. You should have more of a diverse practice, and maybe that's something you need to use this time uh, with the coronavirus to, to work on figuring out how to do. So I have found that clients actually fit one of two different categories when it comes to requesting uh, delay in paying bills or reduction in fees. Uh, there's one category of clients that just will not tell you they're not going to pay your bill. They will continue to request services, you'll continue to send monthly invoices, and all that happens is the checks just don't come in as they used to. Um, and that's a problem, and that's something you have to be on the watch out for, and we'll go into that in a second. And then, obviously, the second bucket will be clients that come to you and actually ask for delaying in paying your bills or ask for a reduction in your fees. So going back to that first bucket, 
In the time of the coronavirus, you need to be very careful about clients that were usually good about paying their bills and all of a sudden stop paying on time because that's a sign something's wrong and a sign you really need to have a conversation about them. We had an experience like that here and it wasn't even necessarily coronavirus related, but we had a client that was very, very good about paying monthly invoices and all of a sudden we didn't get a payment from the beginning of this year, from the beginning of 2020. January's bill went out. Again, this is pre-coronavirus, right? January's bill went out, and the February came, we didn't have a check. I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, maybe there's a processing delay or something. We got into the end of March, and then that's when my admin staff raised the thing to me saying, hey, we haven't received payment from this client even from January at this point. So it's not until early April that I raise it as an issue with the client who basically tells me, oh, yeah, uh, we got it. We'll check into it for you. End of April, still no payment. Uh, for this time for January, February, March, all of a sudden we're 90 days out, right? We have three invoices that went out that didn't get paid. So I had to go, and, and I wasn't necessarily working directly with the, um, the CEO of this client at this point, and my contact had told me the payments were being looked into. It didn't indicate that there was a delay. So I went to the CEO who said that we would, you know, we would get payment. Um, at that point, uh, another week or two went by, hadn't really received much, and we had a contact in the billing department who I emailed and said, hey, we were told the payment was on the way, you know, what's the status? And we were told, oh, well, we're managing cash flow now, and we're not sure. So at that point, you know, we had to send out an email to the client that said, look, we have to stop work. Like, we can't continue to accept new work from you until we get caught up, because all of a sudden, we're now four months into the year, January, February, March, April, and we haven't gotten payment." Now, I'm fortunate in that this client, you know, realized the issue, realized, I mean, they hadn't notified us that there was any issue. They hadn't notified us that they'd be holding back payment, uh, but they did pay um, and they got everything caught up. Uh, but that was only once I had to say, we can't work anymore. And I had to make, a, it was a tough call, right? This is a good client. This is a client we worked with for years, years. And I have a very good relationship with them. And I hated to have to make it about money. I did. And I do. I still feel bad about it. But at the end of the day, I have people here that were working on their matters. I had people I was paying. We had bills we were paying for the client. You know, we, we're not a bank. We can't just, we weren't even charging interest. <laughs> so, you know, here we are. And um, it's a very tough decision because I, if I say to the client, which I did, that we're not going to work anymore until we get paid, there's, an, there's certainly a possibility they walked. There's certainly a possibility it leaves a bad taste in their mouth as well for some reason. But at the end of the day, we weren't even notified that this was an issue and we weren't given time to calibrate to it, you know, whatever we would have to do for the client. And I bring this up and I tell you this story because I think it's very important to watch your accounts receivable in this time. Uh, you know, normally like you, I, you know, you might have done what I did, which is that you have a good client and you realize they didn't pay on time like they normally do. And you say, oh, it's, you know, we'll let that slide. We'll check in in 30 days and see if we got the check. You know, I don't think in the time of coronavirus you can give people that much leash. I think that if a payment doesn't come in on time, it should immediately raise a red flag and you should immediately email the client to ask them if there's any issue uh, with the payment, you know, in a kind way, whatever, you know, language you can come up with. And if you don't receive a response, I think if a payment's 15 days past due, you need to have alarm bells going off and you need to really consider whether at that point you're asking a client for a phone call to discuss the payment and understand if there's going to be a delay in payment going forward and say, look, I understand, like we're all dealing with coronavirus and we understand your business may be affected by this, but if you're going to have issue paying our bills on time, we have to recalibrate the work we're going to be doing for you, right? Because you don't want to be investing tons of your time and effort and your staff's time and effort into their matters if you don't know if you're ever going to see payment. Um, and so I think it's very legitimate to have those conversations earlier on. And that's my number one tip is that if you're, you know, not on a retainer and you're billing month to month, you need to very carefully watch your accounts receivable and you need to raise questions about payments on bills as soon as they're missed. Do not let it sit for long and give yourself an opportunity to recalibrate with a client before you get in too big of a hole. So this now leads us to our second bucket of clients that come to you and ask for delay of payment, right? Or ask you to slash your fees. I was on a conference call a couple of weeks ago and attorneys were saying that they were receiving requests to slash hourly rates as much as 40%. 
I've heard from other clients that they've gotten orders for pencils down, meaning that, you know, stop working on anything that isn't critical. So that's all fine and well. But if a client comes to you and says, hey, I want to pay half of your normal rate, will you do it for me? I think that's a very dangerous thing. I think, it's, I think it arguably cheapens your service. I think it, it cheapens your brand, is your law firm. And it's something you really have to guard against because ultimately, I don't know if your cost of doing business just went down 40%. I don't even know if you have 40% profit margins at your firm, right? So I think what you do at that stage is you, or, for, and this is also the other thing that happens, is clients come to you and say, hey, I need to pay you in 60 or 90 days and not 30. And I don't think that's acceptable either because my bills are still due every 30 days, right? I don't, again, I'm not a bank, I, I, you know, and I don't think your law firm's a bank, right? So this is a very hard question. So here's how I would handle those kind of situations. One, I would explain to clients that we're not able to offer a significant reduction in fees because we're a business as well and we have commitments and our margins aren't that high. Um, and so maybe you offer them 10% and say, look, I can go down 10% for six months. And after that, we have to talk again because I just can't take that forever. Um, and see if that showing that you have some wiggle room, but you know, if there's not a lot, I think is a good place to start. The next part of that conversation, if that's not entirely acceptable is you may just have to do less work for that client and say, look, we can't, we have other work we, we have from clients that can pay our full rate still. So there's an opportunity cost for us. If we work for you at 40% reduced rate, we, can all, we don't have all that extra capacity where we still could take in work at 100% rate from other clients. So maybe we reduce the work we're doing for you, still charge you our normal rate or 10% less, and we just work on the critical matters until we get to the other side of this thing. Yeah, we don't do all the extra bells and whistles. We only do critical things. Will this mean that everything's 100% as it usually is? Maybe not, but we can really focus on those critical items. And I think narrowing down the scope of representation and helping people through the time might be a good way to do it. Because I'll be honest with you, there's not many law firms that I've seen do work that do work really super efficiently and narrowly for clients. Normally we take a very broad view as attorneys as to what needs to be done because really, you know, you're trying to protect the client from a problem on the back end or a claim of malpractice or anything like that. And I think you're talking to the client about how you can really narrow the scope of services and an agreement on, on the risks that, that that may present, but also the, the benefit of, of uh, you know, lower bills in the meantime. And the other thing you need to do is you need to really determine how much you trust somebody because this is something we do in general in our firm, except for a few clients that basically have earned the credit with us, is that we require retainers to bill against if we're billing hourly time. So let's say that somebody has a matter and you think you need $5,000 a time to handle it. I would ask for a $5,000 retainer and say you'll bill against it. And then once you get to the end of the retainer, um, we would need to recharge that retainer to continue work. So it's very clear early on that you have to have the money in your trust account to do work for them. And when that money runs out, they'll have to re-up it in order for you to continue working. And I think, look, that's everybody might feel that that is a difficult relationship point because it signals a lack of trust. But I also think you're running a business and you have to protect your bottom line. And it's very easy to explain that to a client and say, look, I have people in my firm that require a paycheck every two weeks to feed their families. And it's my job as the owner or leader of the firm or the practice group to ensure we have funds to pay those paychecks. So if we do work for you and you don't pay the bill on time, we all of a sudden have a major problem of our own. So in order to accept a client, in order to accept a matter, this is how we have to bill. We have to have the money in trust. If we don't use it, we give it back to you. And when we do use it, we do require you recharge that retainer for us to be able to continue work. This is not a novel concept, but it is one that basically tells the client you don't trust them to pay their bill every month. It is what it is. I, I think you can have those honest conversations with people. And, you know, uh, look, if someone said that to me, I would get it. I honestly would get it. I run a firm where I just depend on people paying us. And if, and if, and if people don't, it's really a problem. And, and so if somebody doesn't know me well enough or they, they know that you know, uh, you know, we're in tough times right now and they really wanna make sure they have the funds because I'm asking them to do something big for me, I, I really, it just wouldn't bother me. And so I only ask, you know, I'll only ask my clients to do things that I would do myself and, and I think that's something I would have no problem doing. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if somebody asked me to do that these days. 
So I hope you found this episode helpful. I hope it puts a little wind at your back when you have to talk to clients about fees. And just know, look, it's it might be taboo, but taboo's out the window these days, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic and you have to run your business too. So don't be afraid to have honest and real conversations. Pick up the phone, don't necessarily do it over email, pick up the phone, talk to clients about when they're gonna pay bills, make sure you're on top of them. You know, you might have to play bill collector, not, every, not something we all wanna do. I, I've been playing it way too much lately, but you know what? You gotta, you gotta be out there, you, you gotta advocate for yourself, you gotta keep your firm running now too. And just be honest with people, be good, do good work for people, and I think you're gonna be fine with your fees. Now, one thing I think would be great for the community here is if anybody's had a similar experience to me to tell your story and how you handled it, because I'm sure there's other ways to handle it that I haven't covered in this video. So in the comments, uh, please, please leave any experience you've had and share it with the group. Uh, you can, if you want to share it anonymously and have me post it, you can always email me, josh at joshgerbin.com. Uh, I will never, you know, if you say, hey, I don't want my name attributed to this, but it's a really interesting story, you know, I can post that, uh, keep everything confidential, of course. And if you think I missed anything, let me know. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Hope you're staying home as much as possible, and I'll see you next time.